I've seen these online before and someone asked me recently if they're real, what do they do, how do they work? So it's a diamond selector too and it's designed for testing for real and fake diamonds. And it comes in quite a nice package. And it's not that expensive. The This one cost inclusive of shipping and by not very expensive, I mean really not expensive, it was £7.15 in the UK. Came from a UK seller. Um, and the name it goes under various titles LED Audio Gemstone Diamond Tester and when you open the packet you get the unit itself with a little protective cap and then it's notable that for protection of the end here because it does require protected there's a little frame inside as well that stops the thing being crushed down it also stops it going in too far and you also get this little aluminium plate for sitting gemstones in and it turns out the way it works, I did a bit of research beforehand to see what I was expecting and I thought, is it conductivity? Because it's got this little, little metal probe. I'll turn it on because it takes me a while to warm it up. So uh, I'll turn it on, that's a clue. And it's got a little bar graph here that you can adjust in the position of the bar graph. And it's got lamp on, battery OK, and it's got lamp on, ready OK, and there'll be a wee delay until that lights up. So this is actually warming up now. And to give you an idea, of that, I used the thermal imaging camera on it, which showed that the tip after stabilisation came to about 36 degrees Celsius. And it turns out that the main thing way these work uh, is that they detect uh, transmission of heat, how thermally conductive a material is. So traditional uh, fake gemstones aren't that thermally conductive, but diamond is. However, in the instructions, it warns you that it will not detect synthetic moissanite. And that's a crystal that's becoming very common because synthetic moissanite is actually based on silicon carbide, but it's lab-grown silicon carbide. And it is so hard and sparkly that the newest one, the first ones had a sort of yellowy greeny colour. But um, now it's evolved to the point that it just looks absolutely colourless. And these things don't just have the th high thermal conductivity, but they're almost as hard as diamond. Whereas diamond's 10 on the hardness scale, the moissanite is a 9.25, I think. And also, uh, if you look on YouTube, you'll find uh, comparisons. You'll see a, a diamond next to a moissanite of the same style. And the moissanite actually looks sparklier. It actually looks nicer. So, um... They do warn you that uh, it's going to be that they recommend another tool for that, but I guess that ultimately this tool is just uh, one in an arsenal of devices that you'd use to actually detect that. So now it's uh, warmed up and the little light is lit. If I touch this to my lip, I get it feels quite hot to the to uh, that sensitive surface. And the idea is that if you've got a synthetic crystal now, it's also got a little metal pad in the back, and that's for a, a security thing, a, a protect thing. Because if you uh, touch it on, if you're trying to touch a gem and you touch metal, it warns you, it makes that noise to show that it's, uh, you know, that you're touching metal and uh, you're not touching the gem itself. Also, you have to note that because it relies on the th uh, the rate at which the heat is conducted away from the tip. Um, if I just touch that, you can actually see the bar graph going up because the actual skin is conducting the heat away. Hmm. But uh, you have to be careful if you're doing a ring and you hold it, f if it's got a lot of gems, you hold it for too long, it will vary because it gradually as the ring heats up, there'll be less heat being dissipated in. So let's touch uh, Let's touch the metal. That's uh, working. So let's touch one of these gems. When I touch the gem, oh, it conducted some heat away, but not an awful lot. It just moved one bar. It's very hard, actually. This is full of so many gems, it's very hard to actually hit one in. So, yeah, after stabilisation time, that only moves one bar. Now, one of the techniques to using this is you have to actually adjust that bar graph because it's got um, three green LEDs, three yellow LEDs, then three red LEDs, and the red LEDs are the sort of diamond indication. So you have to adjust the bar graph I guess you could calibrate it on an actual diamond, a similar diamond in a similar setting, but you have to adjust it so that it's going to just peak up to that sort of level. So you adjust it according to ambient room temperature uh, and the size of the gem you're actually touching. So if I touch this onto a non-thermally conductive surface, nothing happens, there's no movement. If I was to get a heat sink, 
like this. And I was touched to touch it onto the metal of the heatsink. It takes the heat away so quickly that it just shoots right up. It's sucking the heat away from the tip. It's interesting to know, I don't know if this is a good thing or not, when you touch the anodized surface of the al aluminium, it doesn't take the heat away from it. That's me just going in a wee scratch there, but when I touch the anodization, it doesn't dissipate the heat away from that. That's intriguing. That shows that the anodization, although it's useful in helping the heat sink radiate heat, it suggests that if you want better thermal conductivity uh, onto the aluminium, you're better scrubbing that out, that uh, anodization away. That's intriguing. I wouldn't have thought that. So uh, let's open it. Oh, I should mention... This ring is from a film, I can't even remember the name of the film now. It was one of many, many rings in the film. And it was for a jewellery shop scene where the place was smashed and all the rings were just scattered along the ground in amongst the broken glass. So the prop uh, purchaser bought the, all these bulk rings. And I, d I don't think they're... Um, they look like silver rings. The colour is right for silver. And they're very sparkly like diamond. But I think these may actually... I don't think they're glass. I think they might be cubic zirconium. Ultimately, when you buy in bulk like that, uh, classics like cubic zirconium are quite cheap. So, let's uh, open this. Suitable screwdriver. So, what do you think's inside? I was thinking, initially I thought an LM3914 bar graph chip, but it's got 12 positions, so that's only got 10. Could it be op amps? Formed as a sort of a cascade of... Uh, temperature sensing positions and how is the tip heated is it a directly self-heated thermistor or is it a PTC in it so let's get the battery out I'm seeing a chip see a couple of chips the battery is the one that came with it of course it came with a heavy duty battery which means it's zinc chloride the big chip uh, has no number. It may have been scrubbed off. It's got slight blemishes on it that suggest it's been maybe scrubbed. It's got a ceramic resonator next to it. 400G-648. A ceramic resonator is an alternative to a crystal, suggesting this is a microcontroller. The ceramic resonator, unlike the crystal, this is a three-pin resonator. It basically has a sort of piezoelectric crystal in it that works a bit like a a quartz crystal, um, but it's a lot cheaper and maybe not quite as accurate, But um, although they, they can be quite accurately laser trimmed. But the reason it's got three pins is because it's also got the two slight loading capacitors that are needed for a proper oscillator. Um, this chip here is an OP07C. The OP07C is a precision op amp that I'd normally... Now, don't they use those in the solder urns that mo mo monitor the uh, that the monitor the thermocouple on the tip? Pretty sure that they do. Uh, let's get this circuit board out. Let's, does this thing come out? The probe itself has two white wires going in, plus it's got two little copper wires going in. The sort of lacquered copper. Is that going to come off? Ooh, it's coming off. I'm going to break this, but that's all right. I got it for us to break. What do we have in here? Can I get this out further? I've got the little probe, which is a little bit of... Oh, oh, it's coming out, it's coming out. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. It's a PTC thermistor. But how is the... Oh, that's weird. Right, okay, let's uh, zoom in on this. I just want to show you this. It's, it's a bit weird. Let's get right in. This looks like a PTC thermistor. But it's got this little rod going through with that wire soldered onto the front and the back. And that means it's going to actually indicate temperature differential? Almost like a thermocouple, perhaps, but with two junctions, perhaps? It could be a two-junction thermocouple, effectively. That could be a thermocouple material that couples with the copper or whatever that wire is that's soldered to it. And it's comparing the back one, which has not been cooled by 
being touched at the front versus the one at the front that's actually going onto the crystal. Oh, that's quite clever. That is very clever. That's worth investigating. So let's zoom back out before I completely forget that I was zoomed in and uh, just go out of shot completely. Anything more in the back? I'm expecting a little peeper in the back. So a PTC thermistor will ultimately just self-stabilise at a fixed temperature. Nothing in the back, just the little um, piezoelectric transducer pointing out through this, the port in the case. That's very intriguing. Uh, how much further can I go in this other than the fact it's probably the op amp is showing the temperature difference between the front and back of that probe and then providing an amplified signal to the microcontroller uh, and then you, the range of this pot potentiometer here will be a sort of... I'm guessing this will be... Is it going to be calibrated? I would think that it's going to provide a modest voltage range but the calibration, I'm guessing, is done by the microcontroller itself. That potentiometer Double-sided boards don't help Does seem to be going across to the microcontroller I don't know if it's passing under going to the other side But I don't think it is I think it may just be that the uh, That it is the microcontroller doing all the sort of calibration sort of All it's then working on is that That um, op amp is giving a voltage that varies within a given range and it can the microcontroller can then scale within that range for the output. The little uh, transistor thing here is a 78L05 voltage regulator for the microcontroller and we've got a couple of transistors HF and 8A I like the bar graph display as well. It's multiplexed, I think, because uh, I did notice when I was uh, taking a picture earlier on that there was a slight shimmer to the display. So that's fascinating. How does it thermally isolate in here? It doesn't. How does it... It's just literally, I think that, because the back of this sits against the um, case here, so it provides uh, low thermal conductivity. So it really is just comparing both sides of that uh, rod. That's intriguing. I wonder if it's a special material. It must be an alloy to create a sort of thermocouple effect. That's weird. So uh, if you know any more about how this works, if you know that what the materials are involved in that, leave a comment in the uh, commentary down below because that is quite an interesting arrangement. That's very intriguing indeed.